Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Emma Travers. I'm the State Manager for the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners, and I'm delighted to welcome you all here to the 2024 Tasmania Fellowship and Awards Ceremony. Today, we gather to honour and celebrate our new fellows and, award, and our award winners. It's heartwarming to witness the support of friends, family, and colleagues here today. Before we commence, I'd like to cover the necessary housekeeping details to ensure a smooth event. Guests, we kindly request that you take the nearest seat available. Everyone is now seated, which is fantastic. Please note the location of the exit behind you. Um, in the event that we need to leave the room unexpectedly, please leave via the main entrance you came in um, through the double doors on the ground level. Lastly, we have uh, Mr. Paul Redding here to take photographs, um, and we also have Mr. Andrew Harcourt filming the, um, the live stream. Please be mindful of line of sight for Paul um, when he is taking photos. Um, and that's it from me. Thank you, and let's begin. Would you please stand for the academic procession and remain standing until the official party is assembled on stage? Dr. Jim Berryman to the lectern. Uh, thanks, uh, Emma. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and a very special welcome to all of the fellows and award winners, and of course, their partners and families. I'm the Provost of the RSCGP Tasmania, and on the stage today with me. Associate Professor Michael Clements, Vice President of the RSTGP and Chair of RSTGP Rural. Dr Toby Gardner, Chair of RSTGP Tasmania. Dr Chris Hughes, RSTGP Tasmania Censor. And Dr Gemma Dwyer, New Fellows Rep on the RSTGP Tas Council. I'd like to thank Gemma for agreeing to step in at the last minute for Dr Alex Sodell. Uh, Deputy Chair of the RSEGP Tasmania, who is sick today, and we hope she gets better soon. I'd like to thank the following people for supporting the RSEGP by being here today. The Honourable Guy Barnett, Ms Ella Haddad, Head of the Tasmanian School of Medicine, Professor Ruth Kieran, the President and Vice President of the Pharmaceutical Society of Australia, Tasmania, Mark Kirschbaum and Joanne Gross. Now I would like to introduce Tricia Hodge. Tricia is a proud Palawa woman, descended from Manai Lagina, chief of the North East, through his daughter, Watermote Iena. Tricia's background is in Aboriginal education and tourism. It has been her life dream to operate her business, Nita Education, so her people and culture grow strong. Tricia believes that sharing her culture, history and heritage is the most important part of who she is. She believes that everyone who lives in or visits La Trawita should be exposed in some way to the most ancient living culture on earth. Their culture is how the Palawa people connect to Melahithina, the country and how they connect to each other. 
If we are connected, then we can protect, conserve, grow and prosper together. I now welcome Tricia Hodge to come forward to welcome us all to country. Thank you. Yapalingana, Miladina, Manamapalitu. Miladina Palawa, Muenina T. Miladina Palawakani, Nipaluna. Mina Miladina Truwe, Mina Miladina Turano Meramina. Mina Tapudi Tapudi, Miladina Malakadi. Waranta Palawa, Tunapri Tunapri, Miladina Muenina. Tunapri Tunapri, Tapudi Tapudi, Miladina Kunanyi. Tapudi Tapudi, Laina Tapudi Tapudi, Tim Timili Minanya. Tapudi Tapudi Muka, Tapudi Tapudi Warren Kili. Tunapri Tunapri, Pudi Apawa. Ningimpi Mana Mapali, Nangampi Mana Mapali. Warren Timai Pianara Mapali, Pewitu Niakara. Nairi Ninatu. Thank you all for having me here today. This is the lands of the Muanina people. My country is Trubulwe in the northeast and Turanomeramena on the east coast, and I live on Malakadi country south of here. Our knowledge to Napri is always here in the country, and it travels from the top of Kunanyu, Mount Wellington, through the line of the freshwater, out to Timtimili, Mananya, the river, out to the Muka, the ocean, and up to Warrenkili, the sky, and it's never finished, Pudia Pawa. So our knowledge is always here in the country. The plants and the animals hold our knowledge and we're the voice for them. And today we walk where our ancestors walked, Nairi Ninatu. Um, congratulations to all of you here today. Um, I was inspired to break out my possum rug because your um, beautiful gowns are, um, have designs based on the the possum um, rugs from the mainland. So this is one that I made, it has 29 possums in it and it is extremely hot, <laughs> very hot indeed. Um, each possum fur is hollow on the inside, so it traps air, so it's insulated. So usually in winter we actually wear it um, this way and then in summer you wear it with the fur on the inside so it draws your heat away from you. But they are extremely warm indeed. Healthy country means healthy people. And the reason you're all here is about healthy people. So I hope that um, you have a wonderful future ahead of you all and that you look after country as well, because without country, we don't have people. Thank you. Nairi Ninatu. Uh, thank you, Tricia. I would like, uh, I'd now like to ask Dr Gemma Dwyer to come forward to tell us about the artwork used for these fantastic gowns that we wear and the sash given to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island GPs. Thank you, Jim. Galimba. An, an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander creative agency based in Brisbane was commissioned by the RECGP to develop the artwork. The resulting artwork, Creation, Spirit, Healing Place, is now on the RECGP ceremonial gown that you are wearing today. The rainbow serpent, the creation spirit, moves throughout the land, creating the landscape. It gives people the knowledge and wisdom of the land, ceremony, song, dance, and law, food to eat, and medicine to heal. Surrounding the rainbow serpent are patterns depicting locations across Australia, from the St Torres Strait Islands to our north, through Queensland, across to the Northern Territory, Western Australia, South Australia, New South Wales, Victoria, the Australian Capital Territory, and Tasmania. The patterns also refer to carvings, markings, tracks, scarification, and body adornments. What is found in the landscape and people's interpretation of this landscape reflected on their own bodies. This artwork also represents the traditional possum skin cloaks worn by the peoples of the Victorian region. The squares of the checkerboard design represent individual possum skins that are sewn together to form the cloak, old and new meld. 
Through this, the RACGP pays its respects to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities across Australia on the lands which general practitioners learn, teach and practice the art of medicine. I would now like to invite RACGP Tasmania Chair, Dr Toby Gardner to the lectern. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the 2024 Tasmania Fellowship and Awards Ceremony. It's an event that allows all of us just to pause for a second and from our busy practices, because we all work in busy practices, and celebrate all the successes that you guys have achieved this year. Um, successes in passing exams, some with uh, excellent results, and we'll, we'll get to them later. Um, achieving fellowship and, uh, and being recognised amongst your peers as leaders in general practice. So we know that general practice is the best career in medicine, right? Um, it's definitely the most rewarding of all specialties. We just get to do everything. It allows us to do whatever we like and it allows us to walk the journey with our patients through their whole life, celebrating the joys with them, mourning the losses alongside them. Um, but we are the true generalists. Uh, we manage every system in the body, uh, across every age, gender, race, ethnicity. Um, we're the entrusted doctors that care for our non-GP specialist colleagues who call us up when their kids are sick and they have no idea what to do, um, and their families, and also our elected officials. We look after our elected officials and, um, and the dignitaries and all the important people, um, and we treat them as people, uh, everyone who walks through the door, um, and give everyone the same level of care. It's tough work, um, we know that, but we never stop wanting to get better or learning how to get better. So in Tassie, almost half a million uh, people in, or Tasmanians have seen a GP in the last year. Um, that represents over three million episodes of care per year. So in Tassie, we're over a thousand GPs strong. Uh, we're spread widely across the state uh, and working in various roles and capacities, um, working in close to 200 practices. And currently there's about 120 GPs in training. Um, uh, and I think over half of them are in uh, rural and regional areas. This year, nationally, the RACGP, your RACGP, hit 50,000 members. So we're by far the largest of all medical colleges in the country. Um, we're the most trusted voice in primary care in Tasmania and across Australia. Um, and we've fostered really strong ties with our parliamentarians and key stakeholders. In Tassie this year, our strong advocacy efforts were successful in, in achieving a huge win in stopping payroll tax being applied to the earnings of contracted GPs. And for those who are practice owners, this is a massive thing. And this is something that will allow people to come to Tassie, set up practices, not be fearful of being slugged with extra taxes, um, and hopefully um, start to revitalise some of our rural areas in Tassie. Um, and this is what's going to keep us viable. So. Um, other places around the, around the country are facing real, real issues in this space at the moment. So um, we're a real beacon in the country here at the moment. Um, we've seen the announcement of state uh, government grants to support existing uh, general practices to expand on their services. We've been really supported by the government actually um, and, and the opposition as well. Um, we saw the launch of the single employer model in Tassie over two years ago. And it's been wildly successful. And some of you, I'm not sure if any of you will be on the single employee model, um, probably not, but it's, it's come after you. But we've filled our allocation of 20 places for next year re really quickly. Um, and for those unaware of this model, what it means is it's a program where GP registrars can move out from the hospital um, and keep working and still get their, um, their state funded um, salary and mat leave and all these things that are actually a disincentive for people to move out into private general practice. Um, so it's, it's with the state government support that it's been so successful. Um, and I remember when Michael and myself and Alison Turnock uh, at a college conference two years ago, um, late at night, was trying to cobble some stuff together about this SEM um, with the Premier really keen to get this project off the ground. Um, and Alison was able to turn it into something that's been um, a great success. So a willingness of government to embrace new ideas to get more doctors into general practice and passionate GPs wanting to grow our profession is, is what it really takes. So we're now a model for the rest of the country. So now in Tassie for next year, we've totally filled our training practice places for 2025. And it's so awesome that our training team are here today. I think it's the first time that they've all come to the fellowship and awards ceremony. So really humbled by your support today as well. 
Um, we've got more registrars commencing in uh, next year than we have in any other year for the last 10 years. Um, also, this year we saw 100% pass rates in the CCE again. Uh, again, testament to the training team and, and all of the supervisors around the state um, who are really working hard to get people across the line. Um, and I'm pretty sure that even since the days I was a GP registrar, which is, I don't know, it feels like a long time ago, um, our pass marks in Tassie across all exams have been the highest in the country. And, and for those that don't know, we all sit the same national exams. We're not biased. We actually just do really good work and we're really well supervised and we're really good doctors. Um, and at an undergraduate level in Tasmania, uh, we now have a GP as the head of school of medicine, and that's Ruth. Ruth, you're supposed to be sitting down here with all the dignitaries. So Ruth up there, so Ruth Kieron, Dean of, of the Med School, um, and having her um, champion uh, UTAS training, plus all the, the GPs that we have of heads of school in, in Bernie, Lonnie and Hobart, means that we're getting really good cut through with students into general practice. And actually there's some figures released, and Michael and I were talking about this just before, um, just a couple of days ago, that show that Tassie is producing more GPs um, as graduates than other places around the country. So you've, you've all heard the sort of media stories about, you know, less than 10% of graduating medical students want to do GP and so forth. We're above that. I don't know what the exact figures are, but we've got really strong representation of general practice in university here and really passionate teachers. And it's so good, so awesome to see so many of my ex-students here today graduating as GPs. It just feels really good. Um, so we just that's why I stay in med school, as you guys know. Um, and I'm going to keep doing it and keep trying to graduate more GPs. Um, but it's really good. We've got a great uni that really supports general practice. <laughs> um, I think nationally we've also seen a, a massive uptick in uh, training numbers for next year and I'm pretty sure that we've filled all the spots. Yeah, it's the first time for ages. So that, that's really important. So what that does is that gives us the ability to now go back to the feds and say we don't have enough training places so we need to fund more training places and grow the number of training places in the country. <laughs> and hopefully double them over the next 10 years. So we can start to feel the shortfall that's been happening, and you've all seen the numbers of people dropping in general practice and, and the projected numbers as people retire over the next 10 years. So hopefully, as we start to fill these places, we can now you know, fill and look after our Australian community in the future as they age. Um, in Tassie, our faculty is a really small group of just passionate GPs and executive staff um, who've put all this together today um, behind the scenes. Um, and we're just trying to advance the healthcare of Tasmanians um, in general practice. Uh, we work alongside our awesome college training team um, and we're all long-term friends and colleagues and that's why it, it really works in a place like Tasmania because we all know each other and we're all friends. We held some really successful events in, the Tassie, in Tassie this year, the college, um, International Women's Day, a really successful Women's Weekend in Bothwell, and if you haven't been to one of them, you should try and get along to it. GPs in Parliament, which was lots of fun, um, getting into Parliament and hanging out with the Minister and, uh, and the Premier and, and um, doing blood pressure checks and talking about our key priorities in Tasmania. Um, and we had a bespoke tour of uh, the powerhouse during Wonka, multiple educational sessions, um, and the training team have also worked tirelessly to support and examine our registrars as they progress towards fellowship, as you guys have progressed towards fellowship, to help shape you into who you are today. Um, as chair, I've been supported by Alex, as, as you heard, she's sick today. Um, Chris is my censor, we meet every week, um, and my amazing council members and executive team. And I'm going to continue to advocate for our profession at the highest level, as I always do, to grow and sustain our profession in the long term. I'm obviously very passionate about it. So the college is your college. We don't exist without membership. Um, so you just let us know what you want us to do and how we can further support you, and we'll do whatever we can to make it happen. Congratulations, guys. And now I'd like to ask the esteemed Professor Michael Clements to the stand, Vice President of the college, all-round good guy, rural chair, uh, fly-in, fly-out doctor, practice owner, awesome guy. <laughs> That's a hard act to follow. Um, Thank you, Toby. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be down here. Uh, Nicole Higgins, the president, would have loved to have been here, uh, but even uh, she can't be in two places at once. So uh, one of the great joys of being um, a rural chair, uh, but also vice president, is coming to this and seeing all these smiling faces and happy families that are hoping that this was the last exam that you're ever going to do. <laughs> 
Uh, it's not, I'm sorry, just to warn you, but um, uh, hope you're, you're hoping nonetheless. Uh, it's always a pleasure to come down here to Tasmania. Every time I come, the weather's a little bit different, but every time they say to me, you should have been here yesterday. Um, today's not too bad. I did see the blue, blue sky, and I'm going to take a little bit of time to enjoy what I can here. Um, you heard a little bit about how Tasmania punches above its weight, uh, and that's certainly um, partly due to the leadership uh, of Toby uh, and the council uh, that work very hard and all of the administrative staff that are here. Um, the UTAS absolutely punching above its weight. That data showing that it's in the top three, I'm just looking for a nod, top three in the country now in terms of uh, outcomes, uh, showing that um, the university is producing um, uh, graduates that the community needs, uh, and the community needs GPs right now, uh, and UTAS is delivering, so well done. Uh, and um, just a, a pat on the back to Toby too, I feel like I should now, um, after his intro. Uh, but um, uh, Toby is a, obviously a fierce advocate on the board for Tasmania uh, and your interests, but actually uh, he's a fierce advocate for general practice in the country. Uh, and we all uh, listen and pay attention to what you've been able to achieve down here and what he's been able to achieve uh, for um, general practice and for you. So uh, congratulations on fellowship. So fellowship is a membership um, and it's a, an acceptance into a group of learned colleagues, uh, all of us wearing the, the, the robes today, um, and saying thank you for, for training uh, in this program and thank you for joining us and we're here to support you uh, as a college uh, and as colleagues uh, in your future journeys. Um, the fellowship certificate here is an award for your families as well. Uh, we know that um, t far too many times you would have told your children or your loved ones um, or your partner, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that. No, I can't read you the bedtime story. No, I can't go out this weekend. No, we can't go on that holiday because either you're working uh, or you're studying or getting ready for the exams. So uh, it's a real uh, thank you to the families that are actually, and Nicole does this uh, as well. Uh, we're actually going to get the fellows to turn around and clap the family that are in the back um, just to acknowledge that we're sharing um, the award with the family members as well. So if we could just give a little round of applause to the families. Kids, kids don't always understand why, but um, seeing you come up here with the robes and the happy smiling uh, faces and photos maybe gives them a little bit of that insight. You can't uh, uh, overstate your achievement. Um, you've gotten through uh, into one of the hardest university programs to get entry to, uh, many years at university, uh, many years at hospital doing the same training that your non-GP specialists do, uh, getting that, that foundational medicine and that, that health system knowledge. Uh, and then you've done many years uh, in fellowship training uh, with supervisors in different practices, different environments. Uh, for some of you, it's not a smooth path. For some of you may have uh, done the exams more than once or twice. Um, I did my exams at a time where there were only two oral diabetic medications, so I reckon I had it pretty uh, a lot easier than you now. I do. I will admit that I still have trouble with my registrars when they come and ask me questions. Um, they know to bring the guidelines with them when they ask me a question because I can go through it with them and we can follow the bouncing ball. I do also want to acknowledge um, the extra challenges that some of our doctors who had their primary medical degree from overseas. So we know that uh, for doctors who come to Australia um, to seek uh, a life here uh, in the country and in Tasmania um, and seek um, practising their trade as a doctor uh, and seek our general practice fellowship do face challenges. Uh, everything from AMC and APRA um, and visas uh, and um, scary employment contracts um, uh, the, the training that um, is available uh, through PEP and FSP is different to the one that's available through AGPT. And as a college, uh, we're fiercely advocating with the government to level that playing field uh, so that everybody, uh, no matter where you got your first medical degree, gets access to the same education and support. So I do want to give a special acknowledgement to... Um, uh, IMGs is a loose term. Uh, everybody's a doctor. Everybody here is a fellow. We're all together. Um, but we do know that there are many doctors here that have faced a lot of isolation from family and supports, a lot of financial stress and challenges uh, and so a special thank you for coming here and thank you for serving our communities it's a yeah thank you yeah. Um, we know, well, we know uh, as rural chair that um, uh, more than 50% of the workforce that are meeting our community needs had their first degree overseas. Uh, I employ overseas trained doctors, I'm still trying to recruit them and oh my gosh, the paperwork's enormous and, and the fears um, that they go through um, uh, just mean it's all the sweeter when they get their fellowship and they can come up here and get that certificate. It's a really wonderful time to be a GP and to become a new fellow. Um, now, that may sound a little bit of a surprise when you see even me or, or um, the college or, or, or the media talk about some of the threats and some of the reform initiatives and, and some of the challenges that we've got, but the reality is nobody can do what we do. 
Um, everybody else is out there trying to think about ways of making, um, trying to break up what we do into smaller pieces and see um, where they can send that work. But nobody can do what we do. Nobody's got the expertise uh, to do that you're receiving your fellowship for. Nobody's got the expertise in generalism, in uh, not turning away people at the door just because they've got the wrong uh, disease state or the wrong um, complaint. We don't um, screen people to ask them what their diagnosis is before they walk in the door. Uh, we take everybody. Nobody else has got the expertise in compassion, uh, compassion for their whole life, uh, knowing that you're looking after them, their children, their parents. Uh, you're going to be with them when you diagnose the cancer and you're going to be with them when you palliate them. Uh, nobody has got that thorough understanding of the difference between symptoms and diseases uh, and uh, helps uh, patients navigate the times that they don't need a blood test or they don't need an antibiotic or they don't need further investigation. And nobody else can coordinate the care uh, in a broken health system of patients uh, as they navigate uh, everything from very long waiting lists at hospitals, long ED uh, delays, uh, and managing uh, life at a time where um, most of your patients are worried about paying their bills, uh, worried about food on the table, uh, and any kind of health information you give them just adds another stress. It is a great time to be a GP because you're never going to be short of a job. We're always going to be needed, no matter where um, you want to work. Uh, every postcode is available to you now. Um, you're never going to be wondering um, where you're going to get a job, where your next pay packet's going to be from. You can work uh, in any kind of environment across the country and overseas. The RACGB fellowships recognised by very many countries, uh, and uh, they're often trying to poach us too. Um, but uh, those opportunities are there um, to get, help you get the most out of your career and, and the most fulfilment that you can get. You can choose the community that you want to serve. You can choose the work and the life balance that gives you enough income uh, so that you can meet your family's needs, but also the job satisfaction, the, the scope of practice, the career satisfaction that's going to keep you in this profession as long as possible. You have a choice every day about where you're going to work, uh, what, what payment you're going to accept, and what is it that you can do over your working week or your working month that's going to keep your heart warm um, and your mind busy uh, and the family fed. So this could mean that you might end up doing anything from traditional general practice five days a week, uh, or it might mean that you do a bit more of a portfolio career and you move into a little bit of hospital work, a little bit of academic work, a little bit of advocacy work, a little bit of governancy work. Um, I, I tend to find myself reinventing uh, what I want to do every five to ten years, uh, and general practice is the only specialty that allows you to do that. So. This is not the end of your study, I'm sorry, family, um, but I do recommend that you take a pause, that you enjoy um, your fellowship, enjoy your achievement, uh, earn a little bit of money, um, find that work-life balance before you start thinking about your next challenge. Um, you're going to hear from our new fellows committee about what you can do to join them. Um, but if I can put my rural chair hat on for a little while and talk about um, maybe giving some of your time to the rural communities that need you, uh, both here in Tasmania and elsewhere, Remember that many rural communities are dealing with much um, greater shortages than they are here in Hobart uh, or Launceston, and they would love to have you, uh, whether that's one day a week, one day a month, whether it's via telehealth, whether it's via locum work, um, but have a think about adopting a rural community, um, calling up a town that you've visited and that you know that there's a general practice there and finding out what might help them. Uh, we've got lots of good stories across the country of uh, GPs that are based at home because they need to be with their family in a very urban area, uh, but then they give of their time to rural communities. You don't need extra training, you don't need to do uh, CPR training or advanced life skill support level two training, you don't have to deliver babies. Um, your fellowship that we're awarding you today is enough uh, and it's needed everywhere and so please consider doing that. Also, please consider adding on the Rural Generous Fellowship. We've got a few award uh, candidates today um, who are receiving the Rural Generalist Fellowship of the FRA CGP. This is uh, signifying an extra year of training in hospital-like skills and emergency skills. Um, this is once you've had a pause and once you've got the family permission, maybe you can think about um, taking on some additional time uh, in hospitals and in emergency skills and thinking about the communities that need you uh, and the communities that will benefit from you taking on everything from internal medicine, palliative care, uh, emergency care, paediatrics, or obstetrics and anaesthetic services. And I do note that uh, Tasmania recently signed off on a rural generalist model of care uh, being able to be implemented in some of the hospitals. So now is an important and exciting time to be thinking about whether or not that's a step that you want to take. So, in closing, 
congratulations to you and to the family. Uh, this is a real achievement and you should be very proud. Uh, you should also thank the families as well uh, for the extra time that they uh, put towards this for you. This is, as Toby said, the best specialty out of all the medical specialties. We are oversubscribed in terms of training for it. We do have uh, increasing interest in general practice ownership. We've got increasing interest uh, in general practice as a whole, with more and more people coming uh, to uh, the specialty, to the college, um, to serve those communities. This is your opportunity to, to map out what's going to work for you now uh, and into the future for your family, uh, for your finances uh, and for your professional satisfaction. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Um, I now have the, the pleasure to invite Dr. Chris Hughes, Tasmanian Censor, to join Professor Michael Clements, as it's time now to present our new fellows for 2024. So I'd like to remind our new fellows to pause on stage with Michael to enable our photographer, Paul, to capture a quick photo of you. And children are very welcome to join you on stage for a photo as well, if you have them here. So I have the honour to present you the following candidates for admission to the fellowship of the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners. Hello everybody, uh, it's good to be here. Um, I just had a reminder from Emma, our, our faculty manager, that if the kids make noise, that's fine. Don't worry about it, we'd love to see the kids here. I think there are 25 children here today. And uh, again, it's the kids that sometimes suffer in a in a medical um, household. So please let them run right, that's fine. And yeah, I'm told that Michael is ready for anything. So. So can I call the first graduate, David Abbott. Guy Abel. <laughs> Sarah Anthony. <laughs> Sorry, Sarah. To loop by me daily. Thank you. Christopher Joseph Barta. Sophie Briggs. <laughs> Toby does hugs on request. <laughs> Nicholas Carr. Avin Fernando. James Freeman. Celine Go. <laughs> Ed. 
Emily Goss. Julie Hetzig. <laughs> Miranda Hahn. Lillian Hodgetts. <laughs> Fatima Kudadadi. Thank you for the phonetic spelling. <laughs> Wing Si Lao. I think the damn wall is broken. <laughs> Terry Chong Ta Lu. <laughs> Opa Lee May Pitti Gama. Rashmi Mathema. <laughs> Soha Mort Azavi El Avi. Hello, oh, thank you. It's Soha. Mitchell Neverton. <laughs> Tuscano. Sarah Nuttall. <laughs> Osioma Omo Ka Imusa.
we have a double act. Malini Priyadarshani and Vijay Rubin are coming together. Shaminda Ratnayaki. <laughs> Gabriel Reardon. Eloise Roof. <laughs> we have another double act. Charles and Edward Rose are brothers and their parents Anne Wilson and Don Rose, both GPs, are in the audience as well. Nimala Sam Ara Bandu. <laughs> Emma Shoemaker. Rachel Stafford. <laughs> Beth Thompson. We have another double act. Dailani Sanjeevi, Vijay Surya, and Chandra Vijay Ra Radhi Nri. I now have the honour to present to you the following candidates uh, as RG Fellows for admission to, the, as, to fellowship at the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners. Anna Carswell. <laughs> and her special interest is in obstetrics.
Sarah Gilbert. Sarah's special interest was in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health. Tim Jones. Tim's special interest was in child health. Julie Hadzik. <laughs> Julie's special interest was in emergency medicine. It's now my great pleasure to invite Dr. Jim Berriman to the lectern to lead the recital of the Oath of Fellowship with today's new fellows. Can all new fellows, as well as our longer term fellows, please be upstanding and refer to the Oath of Fellowship on the screen. Which will appear magically. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. You would like to um, say the oath with me in acknowledging Okay, now <laughs> in acknowledging the privilege of practicing medicine through general practice and in accepting the fellowship of this college, I make the solemn declaration in the presence of my family friends, colleagues and teachers. In caring for my patients, I undertake to use my knowledge and skills to the best of my ability. I will accept, seek, maintain throughout my professional life to practice within those abilities and to contribute whenever possible in the advancement of the science of general practice. I will continue the teaching ethos which has supported my own training and regularly review the quality of my patient care. I will seek to enhance the quality of my patients' lives, maintain their dignity, support their carers and treat all people equitably. I will treat my colleagues and all who contribute to the well-being of my patients with courtesy and demonstrate respect for their individual expertise. I will at all times strive to be worthy of my patients' respect, never abuse their trust or confidence. My clinical decisions will be based on the best possible outcomes. My patients will not be influenced by personal gain. I extend these commitments from individuals to the health and well-being of all people. May these affirming guides Thank you, Jim. So I get to say the formal bit. By the power vested in me by the RACGP board, I admit these candidates to fellowship of the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners. Okay, I'd now like to invite Michael and Chris back to the stage to present this year's awards.
I'm going to move a bit from what, what's written down here quite beautifully by lots of great people at the faculty and, again, just congratulate all those that have come today. Um, you've, obviously, you've, you've got to the fellowship level. You've even passed the KFP, which is great. Uh, um, we, and we all celebrate that. Um, the, obviously, in general practice, we work in teams. Uh, in families, we work in teams as well. And I think individuals will be... Um, obviously identified for their excellence and all that sort of thing today, but I think we all acknowledge that there's a lot of people behind us, both at a practice level, but at a family and friend level as well. So, again, these awards celebrate everybody that um, supports our practitioners to deliver the best care nationally. So, so to get back to on focus, um, it is my very great pleasure to present a number of awards through Michael today. This is a wonderful opportunity to celebrate our colleagues who've gone above and beyond. Firstly, I would like to present the 2024 RACGP General Practitioner of the Year for Tasmania, Dr Emil Jackick. So, he's got to sit through a little bit of a bio here, so that's okay. So Emil graduated from UTAS in 1987 and has been a GP since 1993. In addition to his clinical practice, Emil has served on the board of the Tasmanian Division of General Practice. We all remember that. Um, and in 2008 became chair of the Australian General Practice Network. Emil also served on the governing council of the Tasmanian Health Service between 2012 and 2018. Emil has been a keen advocate and contributor in the service of strengthening of primary care both locally and nationally. He's maintained a keen interest in healthcare systems and their development and governance. And his work consistently places the patient at the centre of reform. Since 2014, Emil has been a member of the RACGB Expert Committee in relation to funding and health system reform and is a regular contributor contrib to both local and national news. Emil has developed a very successful general practice in Ulverston. It's called the Patrick Street, Street Clinic and in close collaboration with a neighbouring practice has shared educational events and rosters. Emil's clinical interest in addiction has enabled patients in the northwest to access a service that would otherwise not be readily accessible. He's also been active in developing a sustainable and supportive service for three large aged care homes. His passion for teaching and collaborative and innovative approaches has contributed to the popularity of the Patrick's Trick Clinic and has supported the attraction and retention of GPs and allied health professionals in the area. So we congratulate him all sincerely on your success and we are very pleased to celebrate with you today. What an amazing achievement. Emil is going to make a little speech after that. A little speech. Thank you. Wow, that's a long way from a grade five project on bones, isn't it? Um, um, thank you uh, to the RACGP for this is an honour and to those people that have nominated me. Um, I will talk to them later. Um, uh, but thank you to... Uh, my GP as a youth or as a child and assistant, Dr Stewart, who I guess I modelled myself on as a family doctor, uh, and for my parents who took my enthusiasm for going forwards with this and supported me through the uni phase and then beyond. Uh, thank you to uh, Professor Peter Mudge, who during my uni career uh, influenced us and really held the torch for uh, primary healthcare and general practice at uni TAS, uh, which I think at the time was probably a pretty lonely existence. Um, thank you to uh, John Stevens, uh, my mentor at Patrick Street Clinic when I was a registrar, the same as you guys, uh, who uh, really taught me how to listen uh, and be that family doctor, and uh, I, I regard him very highly for that. 
But thank you to my colleagues at Patrick Street Clinic, my partners that I've shared uh, my 28-year journey with so far, and thank you to uh, my family, four daughters and Jennifer, one of them here tonight, Kate as well, uh, for the support. GP of the year, I can look at you guys and really applaud you and say you're the GPs of the year, really. You're heading into your future with general practice. I'll continue to work and serve the college in hoping to provide uh, the pathway that you guys are going to forge. So congratulations to you all. Uh, I thank the college. Uh, um, I'm very honoured indeed. Thank you very much. Our next award is the RACGP Tasmanian GP in Training of the Year, Dr. James Tan. James was chosen for this award for, well, he's a first year GP registrar working in a busy rural practice in Wynyard at the Saunders Street Clinic. His focus on patient welfare is paramount in his clinical practice. He independently reasons through complex medical issues and arrives at differential diagnoses before discussing with his supervisors. James has developed a network of public and private specialist services and will formulate management strategies independently with advice from his supervisors when needed. He has an excellent approach to study and learning. He has developed full learning plans and has demonstrated the ability to coordinate care for complex patients. His approach is level-headed and he treats his patients and, he, and their relatives with kindness and respect. James takes an active role in teaching and learning with other registrars in the practice and also enjoys teaching the local rural clinical school students. James has taken a keen interest in the local community and demonstrates a deep understanding of the important role a rural GP has within their community. He works full-time as a registrar and is committed to returning to Saunders Street Clinic after his second practice placement. He's very well liked by the entire practice team and in six months has cultivated a steady patient cohort. In, in summation, James's award um, or the nominee, the nominee that referred James for the award said, I have been supervising for over 20 years. Rarely does a registrar become a valued part of a practice team in such a short time with excellent rapport with ma the manager, the receptionist, nurses and other GPs, student and fellows, as James has done. Congratulations, James. This award is very well deserved. James is going to address this as well. <clears throat> um, <laughs> thanks for having me today. And I'm deeply moved and appreciated that I've gotten this award. And it's kind of like a positive affirmation that I'm kind of going in the right direction with this um, GP career. And I'd like to kind of dedicate this award to two people in my life. First is my wife is sitting over there to um, kind of like the support and unconditional love she's kind of given me through the stress of kind of becoming a GP. And secondly, to actually, I think, Jim, my supervisor, who's actually nominated me for this award, who's kind of helped make this daunting journey a bit easier, kind of through the ups and downs, transitioning from a junior doctor from the hospital into a GP in a rural community. And, and also, of course, um, answering my endless questions <laughs> on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm unsure, <clears throat> sorry. I'm sure I'm worried. Thank you. Our next award is the RACGP Tasmanian GP Supervisor of the Year. This is this year, Dr. Diane Hindham takes out the honour.
Diane is a long-term supervisor at Summerdale Medical Centre in Launceston, where she's a practice partner. She graduated with an MBBS honours in 1999 from the University of Tasmania. And after completing internship and residency at the Launceston General Hospital, she entered into general practice training and became a specialist GP in 2005. Diane was a convener of the Australian Medical Students Association Convention in Hobart and was a board member of General Practice Training Tasmania. Diane has demonstrated understanding and commitment to the training and mentoring of registrars through set, setting clear and well communicated expectations at the beginning of every term and by ensuring all are aware of the support mechanisms available to them. Diane ensures all her reports are clear and concise and completed in a timely fashion. Feedback from registrars demonstrate a deep respect for her abilities and performance. Diane is a supportive supervisor and mentor who demonstrates a profound commitment to the well-being and, in, and an engagement of her registrars by adapting supports to the individual challenges experienced by trainees Diane ensures that they can effectively continue and successfully complete their training. She facilitates an environment where registrars can safely seek support, assistance and mentorship, often helping to turn around a negative situation and guide struggling trainees towards a more positive experience and career journey. In the words of one registrar, Diane definitely deserves to be nominated for the best supervisor of the year I'll always appreciate her help and support. Congratulations, Diane. Your contributions as a role model, mentor and educator are truly inspiring. So much. Um, I'm not going to remember everything unless I <laughs> refer to some notes. I'm really humbled um, and honoured to accept this award. It came as a big surprise after 10 years of um, supervising registrars. I arrived at Summerdale Medical Practice 20 years ago this year um, as a registrar and a new mum. I was supported really well in my growth as a GP by a great team of colleagues, some of whom are here today. Um, doctors, nurses, yeah. practice managers and ad admin staff, all of whom always had their doors open and were approachable to ask for help and discuss cases. And we've continued that tradition on and it's very much a team effort, I feel. Um, so 10 years later, I became a supervisor myself. I've had registrars from all sorts of different places and at different stages of their lives and learning. I've, it's been great to find out their strengths and to be able to help them to fill the gaps um, and to mentor and guide them to success um, in their careers in general practice. I feel like we all learn from each other all the time um, and it helps us to keep us up to date on top of our games and continue to provide quality care to the patients and the community. Um, so thank you once again for this award. I look forward to, continue to, work, to continuing to work with registrars, with our practice team, with other supervisors and medical educators and the staff of the RACGP to help to maintain and elevate the standards of general practice in Tasmania. Thank you. The RACGP General Practice of the Year Award for Tasmania goes to the Beaconsfield Family Medical Practice. Today, Dr. Prashant Ridi Ganjapuram, his wife, Dr. Sandhya Mench, you ready? How'd I go? Again, I've had a lot of help with this. It's all phonetically done and it's, you know, I'm so grateful for that. Um, just as a, as, a, as a preliminary, as a side, Beaconsfield is one of those little places that that sort of wasn't going so well, and obviously they've had a lot of tough times, you know, in terms of the economy there, the, obviously the disaster that happened all those years ago. 
But these guys have made a huge difference to this area, to this practice in such a short time. And it's, it's just so exciting to see this part of rural Tasmania being so well served. So I'll say a bit more about it after that too. So, so Beaconsfield is in the West Tamer. It has a population of around 2,000. It has one GP clinic, the Beaconsfield Family Medical Practice. In February last year, only last year, Dr. Prasanth Reedy took the opportunity to acquire Tony Lyle's clinic. Tony had been there for 30 plus years. Um, and it was, you know, it was great that somebody was there to take over from, from the work that Tony had done over such a long period of time. So leading the team is Dr. Reddy, along with Dr. Meredith J. Whip, Dr. Harpit Singh, and Dr. Cheetan Panja. Tony Lyle continued to work at the practice in a part-time capacity until his retirement. Beaconsfield Family Medical Practice is designed to cater to both patient and staff needs, ensuring an efficient but welcoming environment. Preventative care services are a key part of the practice offerings and include regular checkups, immunisation, screening for various health conditions and counselling on risk factors for diseases generally. The team diligent works provide comprehensive care, promote health awareness and to prevent illness, ensuring their patients receive the very best care possible. The practice was delighted to host four medical students in the last 12 months for their rural health rotation and are looking forward to the first registrar starting early next year after recently being accredited by the RACGP. Since becoming the Beacon Field Family Medical Practice, the team now comprises four GPs, a practice manager who's also an RN, two practice nurses, three receptionists, a pathology collecting service. I can feel a takeover of the whole Tamar Valley coming up. A physiotherapist and a dietitian. All this was bulk billing 99% of their consultations. It reinforces their mission to provide affordable, efficient and exceptional care to the Beaconsfield community. Please join me in congratulating the team at Beaconsfield Family Medical Practice. speech in my whole life. <laughs> so, uh, good afternoon everyone. First of all, I want to congratulate all my new fellows and their families. I know how much of support and sacrifice you have done for our new fellows during this journey. A great hats off to you all. And my greetings to Dr. Toby Gardner, the president of RSGB Tasmania, the board members and their esteemed colleagues, the guests and our honorable minister, Guy Barnett. Welcome to that event. My name is Dr. Prashant Reddy, the practice principal and director of Bakersfield Family Medical Practice. It is an immense honor to stand before you all today as we celebrate our shared commitment to excellence in general practice. And I'm truly humbled to receive the Tasmanian General Practice Award for 2024. First and foremost, I want to extend my heartfelt gratitude to RSGP Tasmania for this recognition. This award reflects not just our practice, but also the incredible support of our Beaconsville community and the hard work and the dedication of my committed team. And to our patients, thank you for trusting us with your health and for allowing us to be part of your lives. Your stories inspire us to improve every day. Moreover, to my team, including Dr. Meredith Webb, Dr. Panja, Dr. Harry, and the nurses, Ruth and Margaret, and the practice manager, Darlin, and our admin manager, Abhilash, and reception staff, Anjan Rachel, and our cleaning team, Mandy. 
You, your commitment and compassion are the backbone of our practice. The award belongs to each of you because it's your tireless efforts and unwavering support make a profound difference in the lives of our patients and in our Beaconsfield community. I would also like to personally thank the Mayor of West Arma, Christina, Phil from PH in Tasmania, Casey and Janine from HR Plus, and my mentors, Dr. Srinivasan Chinnaswamy and Dr. Sharad Tata. Last but not least, my parents, G. Lakshminagi Shavedi, and my beautiful life, uh, wife, Dr. Sandhya, and my lovely two kids, without whom this wouldn't have been possible. And we look ahead. I'm excited about the opportunities for further enhance the care we provide and to continue serving our community with excellence. Thank you once again for this incredible honor. And I want to dedicate this award for the people of Beaconsfield and to Dr. Anthony Lyle, who served our community for 30 years before retiring last year. Thank you so much all. Each year, the highest achieving Tasmanian candidate in the RACGP fellowship exam is recognised at the fellowship and awards ceremony. Unfortunately, our exam award winners this year are not, not able to join us, but hopefully, um, if all goes well, um, we may have somebody online. Not online. So the, for the, our first award is for the 2023.2 exam, so the end of last year. The winner of the RACGP Tasmanian Faculty Examination Medal for Semester 2 is Dr Vincent Horton. Yeah. Is Elaine Curtis still accepting the award? Elaine Curtis is going to accept the award on Vincent's behalf. The RACGP Tasmania Faculty Examination Medal for 2024.1 is Taylor Smith. Taylor's away. I think he's in the Gold Coast at the moment, I think. So he's really keen to come back next year to accept his medal in person, which we've, we're so pleased about. Yes. Where do I go after there? Return to see. Thanks, Chris. Um, and now we'd like to recognise our most recent life members. So a life member of the RACGP is a GP who's been a member for more than 35 consecutive years. The faculty recognises and appreciates the long-standing support shown by these members. So some of them are here with us today and I'd invite them to come to the stage as I call your name to be presented with a certificate commemorating your life membership. Dr Helene Curtis. Emil Jackich. <laughs> Dr. Michelle Gowden.
And there's one further Life Membership to award, but I just thought I'd take this opportunity just to talk a little bit about her first. So the last award is for the indefatigable Dr Fiona Joski. <laughs> so Fiona accompanies her husband Tim uh, Flanagan here today, who you'll be hearing from shortly as he delivers the oration. Fiona is still working as a GP part-time at Longford, and many of you all know her, uh, where she and Tim have worked for many years since they relocated from Mifton in 99. <laughs> Fiona has been a powerhouse in general practice in Northern Taz for so many years. She built a thriving practice whilst remaining involved in teaching, examining and accrediting GPs. Fiona trained at UTAS and she did her intern and residency at the LGH and North Northwest Regional Hospital before moving further west to care for the community of Smithton with Tim for almost 20 years. She was an inaugural member of the Medical Board of Australia for over a decade, appointed to the Medical Council of Tasmania. She was a crucial part of the AMC Medical Schools Accreditation Committee. She helped establish the process for bringing IMGs into Australia through what's now known as HR Plus. And she's been a GP advisor for the HIC. She's been on the Council of UTAS. She's been a board member of the old GP division. She's been in my role as past chair of RACGP Tasmania, as well as a council member for many years. I've known Fiona for many years since I arrived in Tassie, pretty much through her teaching roles as an educator and as an examiner for UTAS, for the RACGP, as a GP registrar supervisor and medical educator when we had uh, GPTT. Uh, and as someone who actually writes the college exams. So she was actually, and you can blame her for this, she was the national coordinator of the KFP exams for many, many years. <laughs> so she actually like wrote the KFP exams, oh my God. Um, so as a clinician, she's a GP obstetrician um, and she used to do a lot of the actual uh, assault work for the hospital as well. And nowadays she continues to work as a GP in Longford and provides ongoing care to the residents of Tuzi Nursing Home and remains on the Professional Services Review Tribunal. Fiona has a CV as long as your arm, I've seen it, and she's got just a multitude of achievements that most of us can only dream of. So it gives me the greatest of pleasure to award you life membership of the RACG. <laughs> So now I'd like to invite Fiona's other half, who has recently retired, Dr Tim Flanagan, to the stage to deliver the oration. Well, th thank you, Toby. Uh, thank you for asking me to give this oration. But first and foremost, congratulations to those of you today being awarded fellowship. It certainly represents a long, tough path from high school to undergraduate studies, to work as a junior doctor, to GP training time, all that was required of that, and of course, assessment, including the KFP. And then there is the rest of your life, and for some of you, exceptional journeys from your home countries to Australia. Professionally, though, now you are able to go forth and enjoy working as a specialist general practitioner. And don't forget to include the word specialist for our craft is, as Michael was saying earlier, it's the specialty of the undifferentiated problem, further blurred by the psychosocial domains in which those symptoms sit. It's rare indeed to have cases such as when a newish registrar with us up at Smithton uh, had a night on and I asked him how he'd gone. He replied, pretty well. He said a bloke had rung him after hours calls went directly to your phone any hour of the night, and this man said he had, quote, a severe retrosternal pain radiating up my neck and down my left arm and continuing despite taking four anginines. He went on to say, I think I'm having an infarct. <laughs> I knew this old man was a retired dentist. The young Reg said he saw the man and sent him to ICU. I said, well done, but you'll never hear that a story like that again. What's more do you mind if I tell it, as I don't think I will ever hear it? And he never did, and I never did. <laughs> Fiona and I were married as medical students and had both decided we'll be, we would be country doctors, as we wished for that wide scope of practice. 
the responsibility and scope for decision making it allows and a rural community in which to live and a community of bright people because there's quite a few of them here today. We went to Smithton and we took over one of the three small practices there. We worked hard but collaboratively and built it up into one practice with six University of Tasmania graduates, three of us with fellowships and three with a diploma of obstetrics. As my career progressed on most Fridays at 2 p.m. I used to do a vasectomy. Like at Smith and one of the local painters felt it was his obligation always to cut a cat. One overcast winter's day, a car hit a hydro pole, leaving much of the town, including our surgery, without power. Patients having vasectomies are usually anxious. This bloke was incredibly so, but declared it was uh, today or never. He insisted, though, that we go ahead despite me telling him there was very poor light. But he reminded me that I'd said when counselling, counselling him earlier that the vasi are identified by palpation. And I'd said somewhat as a throwaway line, you could almost do it blindfolded. <laughs> so we got underway. We did one side and uh, to make the most of the fading light, we got him to uh, stand up turn round, get back on the operating table. We re-prepped him, re-draped him, we re-scrubbed, re-gloved, and with even less light than there had been to start, off we went. And it worked. We graduated in 1979. Then there was no CT scanner anywhere in Tasmania. There were only a couple of diagnostic ultrasound machines used mainly in obstetrics and occasionally in cardiology. There was one cardiologist in the state and there was one neurologist in the state. Back when I attained fellowship, things were still much less bureaucratic. The exam was not compulsory. The, the censor would ring and say who had passed. At that time, we were living on a farm and there were only landlines and when on call, you had to remain with, within earshot of the phone. When the censor rang me, I was out in the paddocks up the next hill. Fiona was on call, so I took, and she took it. And I saw her come out of our home and put something on the dog's collar. And the dog came running over to me. I unfurled a little bit of paper and it said, you've passed. <laughs> the health system in Tasmania then was underpinned by a myriad of GPs, as it will be in the future. Those doctors were on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all over the island. Resident doctors in places like Boswell, Derby, Deviat, Fingal, Newbina, Ouse, Queenstown, Railton, Rosebury, Savage River, Stanley, St Mary's, Tuller, Zion. And all those practices had nursing and administration staff who invariably stayed for years, if not decades, as did many of the doctors. The admin and nursing staff would give you those little gems like, quote, he keeps a freezer of meals he gives to the needy. Uh, or another quote, her father is really so-and-so and not who she says it is. <laughs> and that added to our understanding of how the community came together. Some of those do doctors were absolutely amazing. A GP at Campbelltown in the 1950s and 60s realised that the management of idatids, which was by surgery, was the wrong way around, and that success would only come with breaking the life cycle of a kind of coccus where it involved dogs. Because of him, this island is now idatids free. Babies were safely and electively delivered by GPs working with midwives in places such as Beaconsfield, Smithton, Wynyard, Olveston, Devonport, by GPs also in Launceston, Hobart, uh, Rosebury, Queenstown, Scottsdale, St Helens, New Norfolk, down the Huon, on Flinders and King Island. All those hospitals had emergency departments, triage generally done by the nurses uh, who'd call the doctor if they were concerned. But this society we're in is, is changing and it will continue to so do. In 1979, there are about 200 prisoners in Risdon Jail. There are about 1,200 patients at what was then called the Royal Derwent Hospital at New Norfolk. 
and the only homeless people were a handful of down and out alcoholics in Hobart and Launceston. Now we have 650 people in jail. We only have 70 people with chronic psychiatric illness still in hospital in Norfolk. And there are at least 20 homeless people in my little town, which has a population of 4,000. This is where you're working. This is where the worst of the mental health crisis resides. We must not be totally distracted by the noisy, worried world. Life is about balance. We did a practice exchange to England, which was a fantastic professional experience. You did, though, have to see a lot of patients over there. One of the practice principals would often come in the morning, look at my list, point to a name and say, don't worry about him too much. He's what you Aussies call a whinging pom. <laughs> but always let the patient start the consult. I remember in 1986 when Halley's Comet appeared, having been last seen in 1910, an old bloke coming in and telling me, that Halley's Comet, not nearly as good when I was a boy, but with only caro lamps and candles, it would have in 1910 seemed incredible. But technology will continue to change. AI is not just coming, it is here. The worry it is quick to generate documentation, but we are already suffocating under too much of it already. And the more you have to read, the pa fewer patients you see. I'm not saying go back to the past, but when we start in general practice, one page would often contain five or ten years of a patient's medical history. You recognised your colleague's handwriting, so you knew exactly who they'd been seeing. A lot of information was assimilated very quickly. Hospital discharge summaries were just one page. Nursing home drug charts were just one page. I remember one patient who used to complain to me about the pharmacist, and he used to complain to the pharmacist about me. The reality was he had some serious illnesses, was a doctor shopper, and refused to countenance what we now call de-prescribing. So the pharmacist and myself hatched a plot. I wrote 11 different items on the one prescription page in his wife's presence and said, go to the pharmacy. And surprise, surprise, none were lost. There are vastly more doctors than ever, but everyone still seems busy. But may I be a little controversial? More graduates need to join you in general practice. Do we really need, as an example, women with breast cancer to be followed up by a surgeon, an oncologist, a radiotherapist, a radiologist, a breast physician and a McGra nurse? If you have stable chronic renal disease, say grade three, do you need to see a renal physician every three months? I could go on. Equally, in general practice, we do not need to do ce ceaseless, uh, to, we do not need to keep doing pointless reviews and talk fests. And pl I plead to you, as skilled specialist general practitioners, please don't waste your skills holding retractors for a surgeon for half or a day a week. To me, every patient was special and important. I always tried to include something of them in my referral letters. Even if I could only say them, they'd grown the best pumpkin for last year's Stanley show. On one occasion, I referred a man off for surgery and I wrote, thank you for seeing Mr. Gray, read his problem, whatever. I can assure you that whatever you suggest to him will cause him no concern, as he survived the first kamikaze attacks at World War II when manning a portside pom-pom gun on the HMAS Australia, full stop. <laughs> I'm now in the winding down phase of my career and largely do only voluntary assisted dying. It is like all good medicine, extremely humbling and an opportunity to meet brave people and their families. 
For the first seven years of country practice, I did my own obstetrics. As extraordinary as it may sound, that is the thing I find VAD to be most like. None of the VAD patients I have seen are scared of death. Like all patients, quite a few of them are very funny. And what people tell you in the last half hour or so of their life is incredible. One patient asked me what I would be doing when I left his home, which was about an hour's drive from mine. I said I was cooking our dinner for the evening. After drinking the actual medication, which is apparently very bitter, and having said his goodbyes to his family, it, this person said, by God, Tim, I hope you're cooking something a fair bit better for your wife tonight. <laughs> Smiled, laid back, and died. I hope you enjoy your careers as specialist general practitioners as much as I have enjoyed mine, working in a job where you can make a difference to people, their families and communities. And it's good to see that the future of general practice is in the hands of our bright, well-trained new fellows. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. We'd just like to offer you something. Thanks very much for that, Tim. Um, a life well lived and, um, and we're so glad that you're still working in the VAD space. Um, so I'd like to introduce now uh, one of the younger members of council, uh, Dr Gemma Dwyer, um, and she'll be, prov be providing the speech for the new fellows. So, hi, everyone. My name's Gemma, for those who don't know me. I'm a GP out in New Norfolk, and I fellowed last year. Um, thanks for the opportunity today for me to say a few brief words. First, congratulations to all those fellowing today. Congratulations on passing this huge milestone, and I hope you're all proud to be here. I want to share a story about a pivotal moment in my career and decision to pursue GP training. Back when I was a medical student on a surgical specialty rotation, I was asked the usual question about what specialty I was thinking of doing. I responded that I was interested in GP or ONG. I distinctly recall the registrar I was shadowing, shaking his head, and proceeded to tell me that all of his friends who'd gone on to do GP were happy. This was a registrar who wasn't yet on his training program, and he went on to describe all his GP, GP friends who were in their mid-30s with families and houses living happy lives. I'll never forget thinking in that moment, well, of course I'm going to do GP. And he was right. Becoming a GP has led me to more happiness than I could have expected. Not only is providing the breadth of cradle to grave care challenging but fulfilling, this decision to become a GP has also enabled me to achieve all those other markers that that surgical registrar had of happiness. General practice has enabled me to start a family flexibly during my training and plant roots in my community. I've already been privileged to feel valued by my patients and to experience the joy of looking after somebody so well that they send their family and friends to see you too. Although we know that's not always a joy. <laughs> now, for many of you here, there'll be other things that bring you happiness. But I hope this milestone of completing your general practice training not only brings you fulfillment in your career, but also happiness in all aspects of your life. After achieving my fellowship last year, I found general practice continues to open doors for me. It provides so much flexibility in choosing where you work, what kind of work you choose to do, the people you work alongside, and the patients you look after. Colleagues from my cohort have already begun their careers, as have I, being able to work in multiple workplaces in all aspects of general practice. My last piece of advice is to surround yourself with mentors and peers who you enjoy working with. General practice can be very isolating, but I've been privileged to work in practices with inspiring and supportive colleagues, and this is a big factor in me being happy in general practice. Congratulations again, and I hope you're all proud to be here today. Thank you, Gemma. 
The ceremony will soon be officially closed, um, but I would like to address a couple of housekeeping matters first. The photographer will be taking a group photograph of all new fellows um, and the council directly following the close of the ceremony and procession. This will be outside, weather dependent. I have just confirmed that it is blue skies at the moment, so we should be okay. For those who have not yet had their portrait photographs taken and would still like to do so, Paul will be available um, where he was earlier um, to have those done. And um, can all guests please leave this room after the closing procession? And we invite you to move into the cocktail function, which will be just outside. Um, I also ask that following the photography, all robes are returned to where you collected them from earlier today. Many committee and council members are joining us at the cocktail reception and we'll welcome the opportunity to have a chat with you all. I would like to invite the chair, Dr. Toby Gardner, to the stage to officially close the ceremony. Thank you, Emma. And can I just thank Georgina and Emma for putting everything together today uh, and Lydia over there in the exec as well. So getting these sort of things together is no mean feat, as you probably all can guess. Um, and we're also joined today, I haven't even mentioned Georgina, our CEO, so you'll get a chance to meet her hopefully after in the cocktail reception. Um, but thank you for all of the people who've made it um, come together today. And thank you for all the families who travelled here and, and um, everything you've done. Um, so I hope to have the opportunity to catch up with some of you um, outside personally in the cocktail reception. Um, I, don't, I don't believe it'll stay blue skies for long, so I'll stay inside. Um, have a safe journey home to all of you who've travelled from all around uh, the state. Um, congrats again, you guys. Um, it's, a, it's a good thing. You've got new letters after your name now. Keep collecting more letters. Um, build up a really big stamp. Um, so it's just got letters and letters and letters. Um, and congratulations on um, all the award winners today um, and also the life members um, for all you, you've given to Tassie and the, the patients of Tassie over the last long, long time. Um, so, honoured guests, uh, the Tasmanian Awards Ceremony has now ended. Please stand while the council procession exits the room.